Hi, and welcome back to LDF Designs. In today's video, I'm going to work on this particular 3D piece, and I'm going to use a stencil and encaustic, if you haven't seen that before. And I'm also going to um, create some texture using fabric. So this particular substrate is solid walnut, and I prepared it with some chalk paint and some tinted wall joint compound. I've also added one of my uh, rusty pieces out of my stash, and I let all of that dry completely, and then today I am starting with the encaustic. I think I've probably mentioned it before, but one of the things that I really like about the joint compound in um, plaster and whatnot is that it tends to to come through a little bit darker once you add the encaustic than when when it's in its dried state and I really love the different tones that you can get um, in this case some of that is just the raw joint compound out of the bucket and some of that I added some blue tint to or blue pigment powder you can add uh, small amounts of acrylic paint, uh, chalk paint, and also pigment powders to your uh, joint compound or plaster to color it. It's a, a nifty little way to get color um, and contrast and tone into your piece. I love this handy little torch that I have. I got it at my local hardware store and it works really well for getting into the smaller areas. It is a little bit harder to control the heat. I, I, it's more of a, it's a stronger flame than, than your regular blow torch. So you do have to practice in using it so you don't burn things up. <laughs> but um, I do like it for these smaller pieces. As is also the case here, uh, I have these these round rollers that I found. Again, um, I think I was at a discount store and they had an entire pallet full, literally probably thousands of these, um, for, I don't know, really cheap. So I went ahead and bought a, a whole bag of them and am finding ways to use them as I make these pieces. The latest thing is I like to dip them in a little bit of the encaustic and then create these rings that are... Um, they have a lot of organic shape to them and texture. I did want to mention that I basically am using three colors of encaustic or three, I guess one is clear, that's not technically a color, but I'm using clear encaustic, I'm using white encaustic that I made in my studio, and then I have an RNF gray that I'm using. I believe it's a cerulean gray. Um, those are the three colors I've been using on a lot of my pieces lately. And I have a really small, fairly small workspace, um, definitely a small griddle that I use. And so I don't tend to pull out a lot of colors of encaustic wax. I just don't have a lot of space to store it all. And I like to use my griddle um, to dip. I, I'll put a little bit onto my griddle and dip my fabric in it or dip those sponges in it. There's all kinds of things that I'll do on the surface of my of my uh, griddle, my hot plate if you will, and so I don't like to have it too cluttered. So I usually only keep two to four, four kind of colors melted when I am working um, and that's just how it works out well for me. So in this case, uh, on this piece here, I am making some marks with different random objects and I am filling that in um, with some oil paint. Thank you. 
As is often the case, I, I usually will make some marks, create some texture, put some of my coloring <laughs> compound, whatever I'm using, whether it's pan pastel or oil paints or tar, um, I'll put that down and then usually I'll, I'll go back in or often with another tool and just create some more marks. I feel like sometimes I can see a little bit better where I'm placing them and what kind of mark I'm making. Often once I get these marks um, colored in and as much of the excess wiped off as I'd like, I will use my small heat gun to do the fusing because usually um, it's a much lighter heat and I have a tendency to not blow my lines out as much when I use it. I decided to try something a little bit different on this piece. Um, I have a lot of stencils, or uh, several, and I went ahead and picked out this polka dot one and wanted to go ahead and use that with the encaustic. Uh, I've seen a lot of artists do this and I've done it a few times. However, uh, I like my stencils to stay kind of clean, so and there it's hard to get that wax back off of there. Um, so I don't use them very often. I wanted to build the texture up uh, using uh, something called accretion where you use a brush that has slightly cooler wax on it. They consider it in the encaustic world a dry brush, but you, you let um, the majority of the wax run off the brush and you let the wax cool very slightly and then you drag that over the textured areas and it will build the wax up. So my intent was to build these polka dots up a little bit um, and create some a, a pattern texture was what I was going for. Most For the most part, it worked how I wanted. However, it is challenging to keep that uh, accretion built up without melting it down when you go back and fuse it. And as I continued to work the side of this piece, I did have a couple of those dots come off. Um, and I kind of expected that to happen. And at the end of the day, I personally like that in my style. I don't like everything to be um, super symmetrical. So I was okay with the fat fact that some of those ended up coming off. I did have to work this piece or this side you know pretty gently and very light handedly so it took me quite a while to clean that off of there but there it is you can kind of see the texture that I created there on the side with that stencil at this point uh, I went ahead and pulled some cotton fabric that I found again at a flea market um, sometimes we have a very large Amish community around us and our flea markets often have leftover pieces of fabric that you can buy for sometimes 50 cents and um, I happened upon this particular kind of white cotton fabric and it's just perfect for creating all kind of, of texture on your pieces. So what I do is I, I cut it a little bit and then I rip it so that it gives a torn edge. I dip it into, well, generally what I'll do is put a little bit of encaustic on my palette and lay the fabric into the, the pooled up encaustic. Sometimes I'll take a fan brush and brush over it, make sure it soaks it up real good. And then I can create just about any shape you want. Um, and I place that onto the encaustic that's already on the surface and those two pieces then will bond and, and as it cures it becomes solid. Sometimes the encaustic wants to pool into the deep wells of the plaster or the joint compound that I have on there. And I like for the joint compound texture to come through the encaustic if I can, if I can help it to do that. Um, again, I think it creates a neat contrast of texture to have kind of that rough uh, drywall compound with the encaustic. So I clean some of that out of there. And then in, in this case, once again, I'm using a Gamblum, Gamblin, uh, it's called Asphaltum is the color. And I'm using that to uh, stain my piece, or uh, actually I did three pieces in this scheme here, so. Mm -hmm. 
I'll be showing these three pieces um, that I have created over on my Instagram page if you're interested in seeing them. Uh, this video only covers the making of this one. Um, however, I did create three all together with these particular colors and different textures. So um, you're welcome to join me over on Instagram and give me a follow there if you haven't done so already. That would be fantastic. Um, and I can be found over there at LDF Designs Art as well as on YouTube here at LDF Designs Art. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love if you would do that. And um, then you'll get a notification if you hit, click the bell every time I put a video out. I, I don't get them out quite weekly, uh, but I do put them out as often as I can. I had decided to add a small piece of fabric uh, across the top of the piece there, and at this point I'm just working to make it fit into the rest of the piece a little bit and give it some texture and interest. If you have any questions or if there's something in particular that you're interested in knowing a little more about, feel free to leave me a comment and I will see if I can get your question answered and get back to you on that. But I do love hearing from you. I did have one more rusty item that I wanted to add to this piece, which I did do off camera. Um, sometimes it's hard to capture those ending finishing pieces because I'm using a hammer or a drill and my table is not steady and it's very loud. So um, I did do that off camera, which I will show you the, the finishing product here in just one moment. I do thank you for hanging out with me today while I made this piece. I hope that you enjoyed it and maybe learned something new. Um, again, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. I would love that. And uh, thank you so much for creating with me today. For more pictures of this piece, you can find them over on Instagram at LDF Designs Art. <music>